Good morning. Good morning. You know, we really live in a remarkable time. All of us are sitting around and seeing all this incredible technology that Werner talked about. We often don't take a sense to take a look back at how much has changed and how much really incredible innovation has happened. If you just think of 10 years ago, what did the world really look like when our phones didn't take pictures? Buying shoes on the internet was a weird idea. You know, carrying maps, stacks around was a normal thing. Today, it's not what we can do. It's what do we expect from our technology. We expect from our technology a world in which, you know, that everything is there of instant news to car services on demand, real time, traffic, the whole thing of everything seamlessly working, all that integrated into a server experience where you can even have one day shipping. So when you think about that at the national level, at the White House, the president really has been focused on how do we make sure that's true across the nation. We really empower the next generation of innovation to take place. And so with that, he created the office of the US chief data scientist. And he gave us a mission. That mission is to responsibly unleash the power of data to benefit all Americans. There's two parts of this statement and this mission that are the most important. The first is responsibly. Because just because we can doesn't always mean we should. We have to think about how do we do this? What is the manner in which we do it? And all the other aspects that go along with doing anything with technology in a responsible manner. The second is for all Americans. And what do we mean when we say all Americans? I would assert to you the way all of us should think of it as technologists as that a technology is neither radical nor revolutionary unless it benefits every single person. Every single person. So give you an example of how we've been thinking about that across all the programs in the United States. Let me introduce you to Pete and Kevin Early. This is what a happy father-son relationship should look like. But it hasn't always been that case. Because Kevin has schizophrenia. One time, broke into a neighbor's house, put himself in the bathroom, naked. Psychotic episodes. If you think that this isn't just happening to a family like Pete and Kevin, it's going to happen to one of you or someone that you know or a loved one. Those are just the numbers. What's interesting about this situation in this case is what did the police do when they got called because of the burglary, the attempt of the idea that someone is breaking in? Do they approach in and they come in guns drawn? Because these are officers whose lives are on the lines every day. This case, the officers were trained in crisis intervention. They recognized the symptoms of mental illness, and they were able to take the appropriate response and get him to the care that they can't, needed. They didn't put him in jail. Why is this so important? Because in this year alone, 11.4 million people will go through our 3,100 jails. Just look at those numbers, look at those ratios, and you will see that's crazy. 95% will not go to prison. They will stay there an average of 23 days. We are cycling them. So the White House created what's called the Data Driven Justice Initiative. This now covers over 94 million Americans and simply says, how do we take the data from the criminal justice system, meld it with the healthcare ecosystem to identify interventions so that mental health, people with mental health issues get to the right care, opioid issues get to the right care. It's data science that powers for everybody. Cities that do this get amazing lift in not only benefits of savings, but they're able to close jails at scale. But it's not just that. Because we have to think about the revolution that's for every one of them. Because where's the tech revolution for them? We have to make that possible and scale for everyone. Next, I want to introduce you to Jennifer Bittner. Jennifer wrote in to the President's Precision Medicine Initiative team, which is the idea of, well, if you get tailored glasses, why don't you get tailored healthcare treatment at the genomic level? And she has a beautiful son. It's her husband, Rod. She wrote in singularly because she said, we have to go faster on medical research. Because Jennifer, under the type of cancer that she has, she will not see her son grow up. But we can make this happen. Why? Because in cancer, the answer isn't in a database. The sad reality is it's in thousands of databases. It's fragmented. 
And the answer likely is already out there. We just don't know how to put it together. And the fact that something as simple as ETL extract transform load is getting in the way of watching Jennifer watch her kid grow up is ridiculous. All of you in this audience have the powerful to change that destiny, not just for her, but for every single person. We have to accept that we live in a world where we have to take the responsibility that technology has to work for us, not against us. You all have that power. So our time as an administration is coming to an end. We're getting ready to hand off to a new team. And so what are the three core things that I would like to make sure that you all know from our time in championing this? The first is that people are always greater than the data. I haven't shown you any equations. I haven't shown you any graphs. I've just shown you the people that impact things. We're all used to as technologists and building great ideas and things, and we say there's edge cases. I want you to remember those edge cases have a name. Their name's Pete. Their name's Jennifer. There's Giselle. There's Sam. There's Jerome. Every one of them has a name. Remember that. It's the people that matter. Second, in every single project, whether it's the idea of ending cancer through the Vice President's Cancer Moonshot, whether it's trying to understand the changing dynamics of how the brain works through the Brain Initiative, providing health care for all Americans through the Affordable Care Act, or finding the next generation of tailored treatments through presidential initiatives like the Precision Medicine Initiative, Data is a force multiplier in every single dimension of our society, whether it's federal, local, or state. And then the final thing I want to tell you, there's always a question of when do you jump in? The time is now. Why is the time is now? Because these problems can't wait. There are $20 billion getting sucked out of local schools to, and your local city going to this jail issue. You can help transform that. You don't have to do it at the federal level. You can do it at the city level. You can do it local. You can do it at the nonprofits. The time now is to serve. And when you jump into a problem, whether it's part-time, full-time, or any of that, you will change the world, not just for all of us here, not for the nation today, but for your kids, my kids, and our kids' kids. Thank you.